gathered on the Wednesday, as we all know, specially dedicated for marriage relationship issues. For today, we have the topic conflict resolution, which we have been dealing with for the past two or three weeks now. My dear brethren, as we have gathered, shall we bow our heads and pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, who we love, I lift your name over all the earth. Father, lately I have found myself in a place that I do not want to be. Anger, hatred, and bitterness is causing me to lash out at the people around me, and especially at my dear loved ones. I am on edge at every point. The slightest gesture upsets me. I cannot continue on like this. Oh, Father, hear my cry. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. With these words of prayer, I welcome each and every one of us to the evening's session on conflict resolution. We would remember last week, this was what we looked at when we focused on the conflict tools. When we did, we used styles or tools about avoiding, dominating, obliging, compromising, and integrating. And we said that the least of them seems to be avoiding, where you do much about nothing. And the ones that are in the middle that either will hurt you or hurt other people is what we call the dominating and the obliging. Dominating where you often end up hurting people. And then you have the obliging where you just seem to give in. And then the compromise where you seem to 
put all together. You don't want to hurt people. You don't want to do this. So you just find a compromise. But the best way, if you are very assertive, if you love yourself and you love others, then you make sure that you speak your mind, but you care also for the others. And that one is known as the integrating style. So with that, we, we come to a little bit of a synopsis of conflict resolution. What have we been doing so far? I am saying that how we resolve conflict depend on a number of factors. How we solve our conflict depends on a number of factors. Number one, we say the people involved in it. It depends on the people involved in it. You know, when there is a conflict between people who are married, or when there is a conflict at church, or when there is a conflict among adults or children or teenagers, or when the conflict is in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, or, you know, the timing, the age, the faith, and the level of dependence. If you meet somebody on the street, and you, different from the person you will stay in the same house or share the common room with, that is a different kind of conflict. So conflict, apart from the skills that we are learning, we have to take into cognizance, we have to remember the, the level of interdependence. That is what will bring us. So it is necessary that we observe that. Again, we say that the conflict depends also, also on our previous knowledge, the knowledge that we have before. If you read from Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, when the people of Israel got to the Red Sea and they saw the Egyptians chasing them and they saw to the left of them the mountains and to the right of them to the desert, all they could remember was that couldn't we have had a better time in Egypt? So you see, be, based on your previous knowledge or previous experience, sometimes you do not have the ability to go on or you have the ability to go. And then your level of conflict resolution is very low or very high. So sometimes if you have had an experience before, it helps. And sometimes it can be very, very fatal. So you need to understand that experience is not always advantageous in everything. It could be good depending on the situation that we are dealing with. Much closer to experience, past knowledge is expectation, future expectation. For some people, due to what they are expecting, when there is a seeming failure, when there is a disagreement, they flare up or we flare up and we don't have patience to be able to talk about the issue with a level head my head in our head to be able to talk about the issue there is a need for us not to let our expectation bulldoze our 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 our, our wills on others then you will be in the dominating area you so sometimes your expectation can affect the result so when you expect too much, and some people, too, they don't expect anything. They just, uh, if it can be in a marriage, or you don't have any expectation, or just say, oh, no, dear, send your woman and the woman to country, broke country, no broke with day inside. It doesn't have any expectation. When the people are like that, when you are solving conflicts with them, it is so difficult. So that is also another one. Then what we just, I started with is conflict resolution styles or tools, where we talk about the avoiding, the dominating, we talk about the obliging, we talk about the compromising, and the best one we say is what? The integrating. And when it comes to this one, it comes to the styles based on your level of what? Your level of assertiveness. That is how much you are able to express yourself. And then your level of how much you are into the relationship. So depending on your level of is a, that you are inserted into the relationship or how much you love yourself, that will make you choose one of the five conflict styles or tools. So that is in the level of your sociability. Today, we would like to look at solving conflict based on your thinking, your mindset based on your mindset. And we will call that what? 
perception and judgments of life. Perception and judgments of life. That means that the way we think or the way we see things, the angle at which we see them would determine or would, would, would not determine how and what we say. What we say. But there is also another thing that today we may not be able to look at. We are calling the level of conflict. There are various levels of conflict. At least we can have three levels of conflict. The blips, the, 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 you have the clash, and you have the crisis. We will take time because sometimes we use tools that are for level one, for level two, or we use level two for level one. So if you have a, a serious problem in your marriage, you need to be able to make an intelligent guess. Which level are you in? And that would also determine what kind of solutions that you must do. It's not everything that you have to bring father to solve. And it is not everything that you have to always say that we can solve it ourselves. It's not every day that it can. So there are levels of them. And sometimes, unfortunately, we make uh, the priest or the, the, the pastor or whoever the jack of all trades. Everyone who is getting into conflict resolution must be able to measure the level of the conflict. But for today, that is not our level. That is not what we are dealing with. Today, we are looking at the mind, the mind and perception. So we ask ourselves, what is perception? Perception. Perception is nothing else than it is a process by which individuals organize and interpret sensory impressions in order to give meaning to their environment. What am I saying? I'm saying that as we see things, as things happen around us, you may give your own interpretation and you may want to organize the interpretation based on certain things. Sometimes you ask yourself, two of you are looking at one thing and then you are asked the same question. What did you see? Somebody say, I thought it was tender. Another person will say, I thought it was a stone. Why, how did it, does it happen that way? You know, even, even if you look at the, 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 the man who was born blind when Jesus was healing him, and then he asked him, what do you see? He says, I see human beings as if they are walking upside down. And you ask the person, you, you are blind from birth. How do you know how human beings look like? You see, his mind, his perception is affecting the way he sees. You have never seen before. And you are asked, what do you see? Then you are talking about things that you have never seen before. That's what many... So the way we have sensory impressions, like you feel things, you hear things, you, you know, by our senses. So the things you see, the things you hear, the things you taste, the things you feel, uh, or the, 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 the smell that you, you, you are able to you know, detect by you. Those things, how, what interpretation do we give? As a, they, they come up and we are. So the last time, we just dealt with sociability. Today, we are looking at the mind, the interpretation of the mind, how it picks sensory. That is your senses, the five senses that we have. So that is very, very important. Our behaviors are often based on our perception of what reality is and not on reality. Now, most of our behavior, most of our responses is a result of what we thought we saw or we see, and not necessarily what actually was most of the time. So you, it is possible for you to respond to somebody thinking that this was the answer, and later on you realize that, ah, but you have not been answering what I've been talking about. And this is why certain people make long argument. Why? Because they were talking actually about a different thing. In fact, in my experience as a priest, I have found out that so many people have asked us, Father, why do Catholics, why do Catholics worship Mary, for example? And then my question is funny because this person has never read any Catholic book that says that Catholics worship Mary. But the person is asking me why we ask Mary. That person has a problem of perception. And so I have to help the person clear the perception before I can answer the question. Because I never told you or you have never read that Catholics worship Mary. 
So why are you asking me that? Well, the things that Catholics say they do, you don't want to ask them. But the things they have not said they do, you ask them. This is all about what? Perception. So because of perception, there is a lot of confusion in our relationship and the relationship of marriage and, and, and what? And even in the church. Because some people think that they, what they see is the best. And the, so they will fight with their priest or they will fight with their congregation. Sometimes a priest or a pastor will think that, yes, he is the pastor. So he can see everything that is right. Sorry, it is only a perception of what you think is the reality. But it may not be the reality. So indeed, we need to be Calm when you are arguing with your friend, or when you are arguing with your partner, or when you are arguing with your church men, when you are arguing with your church members, take it easy. When the thing becomes heated, cool down because you may have just misread the whole thing. And then you are arguing. No, 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 no. You are right, you are wrong. Shut up, do this. Why? You see, when people behave like that, it shows your immaturity. Because you are talking with somebody. Why do you tell the person, you oh, shut up? You should shut up first before you tell somebody to shut up. You haven't learned to shut up, but you are telling somebody to shut up. It means that you have a problem of perception. Why do you shout on another person and say, don't shout at me? You see, it's all about perception. You say, so you see, for example, I want to just use little, little images just to ask a question. I believe all of us are watching. So now I want to ask you the question. You see, look at something. What do people perceive? To the left, you see that people perceive that I am bored. But in reality, what do you actually feel or think? I love my job. I am happy. But people are thinking that, you don't like your job. You are always gloomy. But that may be the way my face looks like. And that is how most times. So perception. And people can have a lot of impression or perception about us. So you need to be careful when somebody asks you a question. You need to find out, is the perception right? If the perception is not right, you clarify that before you deal with the substantive. Because you may not be dealing with the same argument. And that is why a lot of couples are fighting. Because they, what they are thinking about, or you think the other person said this. And you know, there are some people who always say, I know what you are thinking. When people always say that, you know that they have a lot of problems. People who always say, I know what you are thinking. I know what you want to say. I know what you were about to say. Why? Are you God? You have a problem of perception. And such are the people who are always loud. They don't want anybody to correct them. This is a problem of perception. So again, I go on to. Now, you see, look at the figure that is on the floor for these two persons. What do you see? Tell me, what do you see? What number do you see? Do you see six or do you see nine? So which is the correct answer? depending on where you are standing. So it is a six and it is a nine. And it is all correct. So why argue? Why kill yourselves? Why insult somebody just because you, a person doesn't see from your point of view? No. In fact, it is a sign of immaturity or it's a sign of not being ready. You know, so many of us are attempting marriage. People are always proposing to others. And yet they are not ready to bring down, come down. Why is it that we are, when you want to enter into a relationship, you must know that you are going to always get into conflict. And in conflict, we must deal with the resolution. And in the resolution, one big problem is that perception. So you argue, no, 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 father, it is this way. Yes, I say, take your time. Sometimes you even need to sleep about it before you may know the truth. You see, when Joseph realized that Mary was pregnant, he knew that Mary had done something wrong. So Joseph decided to get rid of Mary quietly. But Joseph, like the Joseph in the, the, the Genesis, Joseph in, in, in the Bible, in the New Testament, he slept. He slept in the Lord. And when he slept, 
God revealed unto him. And then God told him, when you wake up, take Mary as your wife. Did he understand? No, but he took it. Sometimes a lot of us need to sleep in the Lord. Some of us men, we need to sleep because you may use your mind and you cannot get it. You need to sleep before you wake up. Everything will be new. God will help you. Okay. So now again, I ask you the question. What do you see? What do you see? Just one minute or just five, ten seconds. Sorry, not one minute. What do you see? Well, the answer is that there is a young lady's face. And then there is also an old lady's face all in one picture. Did you see that? Well, that's it. If you saw it, that's good. If you didn't see it, try harder. But the truth is that whether you see it or you don't see it, this is a picture of a lady, a young lady. If you see her hair, that is looking white like that. So, yes. And it is also the same picture of an old lady with her mouth open. The young lady, we only see her cheeks, her cheek, but with the, with the old lady, we are able to see her mouth open. Do you see that? Well, that's a challenge for you. My dear brother, my dear sister, what do you see? Well, I see there is a, there is a bird with its beak open, wide like that. And there is also a rabbit with its ear facing to the right. And there is a bird that is facing to the left with its beak open and tongue in the mouth. Did you see both? Perception. Somebody is still struggling to see. Somebody saw it immediately. Somebody has just seen it. But it's all about perception. Your mind is what is at work. What do you see? My dear brother, what do you see at first? What did you see at first? There is there's a picture of an old man with a very big nose facing the right. And then there is a picture of a young lady facing the left. Which of them did you see first? And why did you see it, one first? Because of your perception. Everyone sees differently. Even as I'm explaining, somebody has still not yet seen. Somebody's only seen only one. But which one do you see? There are two pictures. Which one did you see first? These are all perception is in the mind. If you don't train your mind, you will argue about things that you are not supposed to argue about. Now I ask you the last one here. Which of the lower lines is the continuation of the upper one? Wow. Is it the first one to the left? Or is it the other one to the right? Choose, choose, choose one. I'm sure you are with somebody in the house or you are with somebody or choose one. So we will see which is the correct one. Is it the one to the left or is it the one to the right? Of the two lower lines, which of them is, which of them joins straight to the one up there? Have you chosen? Well, I'm sure you have chosen. Somebody chose to the left, another chose to the right. Now let's get the answer which is the answer. The answer is to the left, to the left. So why did somebody, did you just do it lotto or did you actually know it? You know, some people get things right, but if they just stake lotto or they just do try your luck. Others also get it right because they really knew that it was right. So the fact that you got it right does not necessarily mean that you are right. That's what happens in most times in the arguments that we have at home. Yes, what you said was right, but even you may not have understood it the way you, you were thinking. So it is not always that when we get the answer right, then we are right. So it is about perception, my dear brethren. That is what we are. Frequently, in, in judging or in conflict, the reason why there is conflict is that we are always judging people. We are always judging people. We are always making interpretation out of the, our environment, our environment. So we judge people. How do we judge people? 
that is what usually brings the conflict. Because if the way you judge it is not the way I see it, then we are going to have conflict. So I'm going to bring some of the frequent ways by which we judge people that you can really look at them and consider why you have said that that man is a bad man or that your woman, that your wife is bad, she's not good. Or the way you have always spoken about your partner. Today, we will look. I'm sure yours will be included. I'm sure yours will be included. The first one is known as the selective perception. Selective perception. People selectively interpret what they see on the basis of their interest, background, experience, and attitudes. What do I mean here? I mean that, you know, there are some people, if they love football, even if they see anything, they want to talk about football. Even when we are talking about serious things, they just want it to be about football because it is their interest. Depending on the background that you came from, if you came from a village, if you came from a city, if you came from a rich family, if you came from a spiritual family, if you came from a family that is superstitious and traditional, when you see anything, it is devil. When you see anything, it is God. When you see anything, it is, you see, because you don't allow yourself to be objective in the way you think. So your interest seems to cover everything and your attitude if you are happy, everything is good. If you are not happy, no matter what people say, anything is not nice. So because you didn't wake up early, your husband is asking you, how are you? I'm fine. Yeah. Why, why, say, why behave that way? You are selective. Because you are not in the best mood. Everybody should not be in the best mood. So that is known as selective perception. You find people who, who, who always make their judgment based on their experience. So anytime you are talking to them, eh, this is what even happened to me the last, anything they are hearing, they have to compare it with their past experience. It doesn't make you grow. It doesn't make you mature. You don't grow. You, don't, you, you, you are always backward. Your experience is not, the, it's not everything in life. There are some people, they, they enter your house and then they see there's the something for the first time. And then you say, that, isn't this nice? Oh, yes, it is just like the one in my father's house. Oh, dear. Couldn't you have, couldn't you have just given your, your valuation of the thing without that added selective perception? So the thing is only nice because you have seen a similar thing in your father's house or in your village. Such people, you know that there is a problem. And that's what is happening in most of our relationship. The next one is known as the halo effect. The halo effect is drawing a general impression about an individual on the basis of a single characteristic. So, you know, the halo is that which is like an aura. So you look at somebody and you see the person's dressing and you say, that, no, this person, they have been penalized. Or you see the person, you say that, hey, with your bare fine, pow. Or you see the person's dreadlocks, hey, with your best shiwi, pow. You see, just because of one characteristic, you make a general conclusion about the situation. Maybe your son or your daughter brought somebody home for marriage. You saw the person's first impression. You said that, mm, in penasem. And you won't penasem at, maybe you die. Why? So sometimes we make our mind based on only one characteristic, first impression. And then we say that, mm, maybe this is what I've seen. Maka, maka. That's not fair. That's not fair to conflict. Yes, you thought that it was that way, but allow yourself. Your mind must be renewed. I believe I'm speaking to somebody in your relationship because some people are in a relationship. They have said that they have made up their mind about a certain decision, and it's just because they saw one halo effect. That is not fair. The next one is called the contrast effect. That is evaluations of a person's characteristics that are affected by comparisons with other people recently encountered who rank higher or lower on the same characteristics. So you see somebody or you hear somebody or you, you just watch somebody on the TV. Maybe you watch a person and he, he, he talks like that. And then you say that, oh, this person is talking like this man. So it is so 
it would be nice to contrast. You compare them. Or he doesn't talk like my boyfriend, so it's not correct. Or he doesn't do this. A lot of ladies do that when they meet their boyfriends or when they want to make their selection. They just say, no, 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 no. I don't like him because he, does. he doesn't do it this way. But people are different. People are different. Treat them for who they are and not compare them to others. That's why you are not able to move on in that relationship. So whether it is in a relationship, don't compare the people like that. Yes, if you compare them, still judge the people for who they are. It is not fair that you are always. So the man would always say, yes, you know how to cook, but you don't cook like my mother. Why do you say that? Was it necessary? Was it mature to have said that? You are always comparing. It, it happens in the way people make love, the way people give money, the way people talk, the way people, in all, most of the things, a lot of relationship problems is as a result of comparison. And that's why sometimes it is, you have to be careful when you are growing up, those who are yet to marry. If you moved to, if you have too many experiences of men and women, when you get into marriage, you are never satisfied because your experiences are too wide. And nothing satisfies you again. So be careful about that. The next one, projection. Attributing one's own characteristics to other people. to me, say, so you can't do it. Even I, I can't do it. Therefore, you can't do it. Oh, so you are the standard. Say me and Kameye. That's the reason why you see that you see a man and a woman standing there and they are talking. And everybody says that it is his boyfriend, it is a girlfriend. Why? Is it because you will do it? You have a big problem. If you, are, if you don't have a reason to suspect the person, why do you think such evil about Because you see, it is in you. So you think that the person will do it. Because one person will do it. Maybe that is the reason why so many of us are getting into problems like that. We need projection. Is you 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 use yourself, you project yourself, you look at other people from your own spectacles. So if you can do it, then people can do it. If you can't do it, then they can't do it. So yeah, can't say, say, oh, nobody can do it. Why? Because you think you can do it. That's not fair. That's not fair. Okay. The next one, stereotyping. Stereotyping is putting people in groups. You say that, hey, this man, dear, he's an Ewe Mano, so he's like that. Oh, why do you do that? This person there, he's a shanty man, no. He's a shanty man, so he's NPP. He's this world, so he's that. Those type of thinking, if we as Christians will stop, wait for me to tell you what I be, what I my party. But why do you see that? Oh, he's uh, he's from the north, so he's like that. This is not only a bad uh, conflict resolution uh, practice, but it is also what we call the, the structural sin. It is a sin. If you, if you project it too much, it even becomes a sin. Oh, leave the women. They are like that. As for women, that's how they are. Don't talk that way. As for men, they are always like that. As for boys, they are always like, no, no, no. Talk about your son. Talk about your husband. Talk about your wife. Don't talk and put people in conflict, uh, in uh, stereotyping. Women are always like that. All the priests are bad. Catholic priests are like this. How? Have you met all Catholic priests? How can you speak that way? No, you cannot do that. That's not fair on your part. It's not fair. We need to be able, when there is, when anything, when there is a problem, you need to be objective. So don't look at people and say that, oh, is, this is your friend, so he will say this. 
I know that there are some people who have said that they don't want priests to talk about their issues because they think that the person would say it for this or that. I think that person is projecting and that person has a problem of stereotyping and he uses the halo effect to mix it. And because of that, he is doing uh, was selective perception. As a result, there's contrast effect. All of it happens in there. I've given the example with one, okay. Number six, overconfidence bias. We tend to be overly optimistic. There are people who, when you are talking to them, oh, we can do it. Yes, 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 we can do it. So everything, they are, over, they are overconfident. So they don't even, yes, I can do it. I can, because of that, they don't even listen to anybody. Overconfidence bias. So everything is positive. Everything, you don't know that, they, sometimes there are limitations to life. And because of that, you promise things that you can't do. Because you, are, you made yourself Superman. And when you promise and you cannot do, you are forgotten that it is a recipe for what? For conflict. So it could even be even a pastor who thinks that, yes, somebody has brought a spiritual thing to you. Maybe you cannot do it. Maybe you cannot handle it but overconfidence bias. And then when you cannot do it, it begins to create conflict. These are things that we must be mature enough to be able to handle. Number seven, anchoring bias. The tendency to focus on the initial information as a starting point. So some people, when the first mistake that you do or the first correct that you do, once they say you are right, oh, they have anchored on that thing. So the first information they hear, there are some people in the when there are some when somebody comes to tell you your wife is cheating, that's all you hear. That's all you hear. You do you don't hear anything. Your husband is cheating. You don't hear anything again. Your son has become like this. You don't hear anything again. You have a problem of anchoring bias. You are biased because the first information is eating you up. What about if the first person who came to tell you is wrong? I have been a victim of that before, many, many times. And I don't think any of us, it's good to do it. Because somebody goes to say this the first time, and then they say that, yes, that is how it is. That's what it happens most often in the church or in other places. One person says something the first time. They say he's not good. Everybody says he's They say he's good, though. Everybody thinks he's good. No, don't do that. Because people change. Number eight. Confirmation bias. We tend to seek out info, information that reaffirms our past choice, and we discount info that contradicts our past judgment. So you, you say to yourself that, or you know that, or you think that this person is bad. So now you go about looking for information that says that he is bad. And even if you hear good things about the person, that's not what you are looking for. So you throw it away. Even if I say you are good, so you, are, you look for confirmation bias. There are so many of you like that. Women do it. Men do it. When they are accusing their wives, when they are accusing their husband, so they don't hear anything. All they are, when they, in the whole conversation, all they want to hear is the part that will confirm what they think and they want to say. Because of that, there is a lot of conflict. Number nine, availability bias. That is the tendency of people to base their judgment on information readily available to them. They won't go, they won't do any research. So they just pick things like that. Uh, Facebook says that, uh, uh, Facebook says that, uh, President, this is like that. Therefore, you believe it. Can't you check it yourself? It just because somebody has sent you some a message that somebody has died. Maybe they send you a message that a, a big person has died. You don't even check the information. And because you heard it, you just send it to people. You don't you know that you are destroying people? This is the reason for conflict. Somebody comes to tell you about somebody. It is, the information is so available, easily to you, instead of you to check it, no. You just buy into it like that. 
Why? This is a recipe for conflict, and it, is going, it affects many of us. The next one is known as representative bias. I mean, that all these are biases. They are, bias means that they are skewed. They are, they, 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 they are not balanced. The tendency to assess the likelihood of an occurrence by drawing analogies with uh, uh, drawing analogies and seeing identical situations in which they don't exist. Maybe my child was a, 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 a you, you, you say that somebody went to marry and they had common fund. They had, they had their, um, they, 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 they put their money together and it didn't work for them. And then you see that another person is going to buy a car with another pen, they are going to put their name on it. And then you say that Debbie, 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 don't do it because me cry me banu omuko ye omu account anye ye. So because musu muko ye mu dene. Hey, why? Representative bias. You are bias. You pick one story and fit it on another, and you insist that it is true, as if you are God. Why do we do such things? I'm speaking about these things because I'm sure you find yourself in one of these categories. I'm sure for somebody, probably all 10 so far. Escalation of commitment. An increased commitment to a previous decision in spite of negative information. So sometimes there are people who say certain things or who take a, sit, who take a stand and every day they make it worse. There are some people who hate certain people. They hate this particular priest, or they hate this particular man, or they hate this particular person. Can even be, unfortunately, a man of God who hates one a member in his own church. And even when people are saying that, oh, this person is not like that, then the person is looking for other things, escalating it, raising it, making it even higher, even when you are found. Why do you do that? Don't you see this to be devilish? Why do you make up your mind that this person, I will destroy him, I will destroy her? Some people are in relationship because your wife has left you, because your girlfriend has left you, or because of that, or because you think that there is a problem, now you start, you escalate the thing. Who can be gum? Even the thing is not something that we have to fight about it. Then you are just escalating your commitment. Me, me, I will show you. I will let you see that you will regret. These are the things that happen. Don't speak like that. The, the last but one is randomness error. We tend to create meaning out of random events. This is superstition. Many of us are like that. Sometimes we are picking from our village lives or our, sometimes our upbringing. This happens, that happens. Then you say, hey, don't you see that there is a connection? Is it everything that there is a connection? Some of us make certain connections that sometimes you wonder. Some of you, you make your priest and your pastors, you force us to tell you lies. I dreamt, I saw this. I dreamt again, I saw that. Father, what does it mean? Does it mean I am going to do this? Then you even suggest to the pastor. And the pastor will tell you, yes, it is so. Because you are ready for lies and you'll be told more lies. You, you put some people, of course, maybe the man of God himself is not mature. And he, is, he, he himself or she herself is just looking for fame. But why not? Yeah, this is why, because the people who are following or worshipping are carnal-minded. So they have carnal leaders also. We tend to create randomness. I slept. I saw this in my dream. I slept again. I saw this. That then means that what? This morning I woke up. When I then know that this happened, then that happened because of that. No, no, I feel that this is not good. So then be just because of that, then your mother-in-law starts calling you. And you say that, no, even the way I woke up in the morning bad and my, my mother-in-law called me, I think that this is my mother-in-law. She wants to do something evil. Oh, oh, oh. Mother-in-laws, they are suffering. But well, you too, tomorrow you become mother-in-law by God's grace. Or you become father-in-law, you are forgotten. You will also be 
you will also be pointed as, as a witch or as a wizard. What you do to others, it will come back to you. Solve your problem and stop blaming others. Number 13, hindsight bias. We tend to believe falsely that we'd have, we would have accurately predicted the outcome of an event after the outcome is actually known. So you always think, ah, the way pa me here, they say and can be here. And you say, no, why are you here? I didn't train with you. It is past and gone. You couldn't answer. Then you always think that I could have done it that way. I could have done. Live in the present. If you can't do it, you can't do it. Why do we always want to make ourselves higher than we are? I think it's a sign of humility to just admit that, yes, I didn't get it right the first time. You know, these are things that are worth, these are things that affect us based on our perception. All these things is in our mind. Look at this. As we see here, you see, there is the picture here. This is an iceberg. But when you go below this iceberg, you will find a huge thing. What you think you see in conflict, it's usually just the tip of the iceberg. So my dear brethren, all of us need to take conflict resolution, conflict very serious because conflicts are real in our life situation. When it comes to conflict resolution in your marriage or in your relationship, allow God to work on you and your spouse's heart and allow him to fight on your behalf. Too many of us we are fighting for ourselves. So, you are too big for your mind. You are too big for God. Allow God to be also in charge small. Often, it is our woundedness that is driving our conflict with each other. It's not that what the person, you are hurt. You need a touch. May the Lord touch somebody today so that you will be healed. Because when you are healed, you will realize that that too no and too much noise was not necessary. Last one. God works at the level of the heart and only he can bring about the conflict resolution and healing that many of us really need. Many of us need healing, but are we going to ask God? God is with us. He will never abandon us no matter how difficult that looks like, come to God. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Thank you very much. My dear brethren, it is time for us to take some questions or suggestions or other contributions that may help to deepen the discussions for today. May I take your questions? May I take your questions for now? If there is any, if you want to come online, you may be able to come online. You, you may be able, you just lift up your hand or sometimes if we try unmuting all of us, I'm afraid that there will be lots of noise at the background. So if you want to speak, just, just uh, raise your hand or send a message says, talk, and then they will just uh, will mute you. Just send me a message, talk, or something like that, and then I know that you are ready to talk, okay? But otherwise, messages coming in says, bless you, Father. I am soaking the word. Oh, bless you too. Thank you very much. Another person says, thank you so much for such an insightful teaching. Thank you also for your listening ear that you have given to me this evening. So we will, I'm also here waiting for any person who may want to ask a question or may want also to give a contribution in the perception, in the area of perception when it comes to conflict resolution. That's another person says that, she says, the teaching was wonderful. I have really learned a lot. Thank you, my sister, for that encouraging words. 
We thank God for the listening ear also. And above all, for God to grant us the grace to be able to change. Somebody says that, Father, somebody says, thank you, Father. God bless you. God bless you too. Another person is also sending the message from the UK asking, Father, is it possible to share the lecture notes? Yes, you can go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube, just type um, uh, Raymond is one. In the YouTube, you would find you will find the whole lecture on video. After some hours, it will be uploaded for us. After some hours, it will be uploaded for us. Another person is asking, thank you, Father. I have really learned a lot and I resolve to practice what you have taught. Oh, aren't I blessed? I am blessed that you have uh, said that you will learn what, thank you, God bless you too, God bless you too. My sister, yes, okay. Uh, another person says that, but can frustration lead to a different perception that a person uh, knows that is the truth? I don't get it. Says, but can frustration lead to a different perception? Though the person knows the truth, please. Yes, frustration can. So the condition in which you are, if you would remember, the very first thing that I said was that the, 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 the level of interdependence. So if, for example, the next week we are going to do the types of, uh, uh, the, the, type, the level of conflict, you will note, yes, that it came. But when you are frustrated, when you are tired, when it is in the morning, your level of taking conflict is not the same. So it is necessary that we all consider. Sometimes when it is in the evening, it is not necessary to, for you to be asking so many questions like that. I see somebody's hand up and has been given the chance already, has been unmuted. So I will give, I will give the chance for the person to speak now. Tim, please speak. Hello, Father. Yes, yes please. Yes. Um, honestly, I just want to re-echo what some of um, the participants have been saying as okay. far as the presentation is concerned. Um, we have, some of us have been enriched, if not all of us, uh, because uh, this presentation has really come at a time that we need it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this situation we have found ourselves is almost always bringing tension and psychological issues to us. Okay. Um, I want to say thank you very much for this research that you have undertaken in this topic that you have shared with us. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. I'm humbled. Thank you very much, Tim. Okay. God bless you. Okay. Just like Tim has done, if you want to ask a question or share anything, just raise your hand at the raise hand corner and then you'll be just, you'll be, you'll be allowed to also share or talk. So feel free, anybody, whatever you would want to say, and you, you are, this is the time for us also to share. Thank you. I'm continuing reading the, uh, the feedback that has come up, and then I'm waiting for anybody who would also want to speak or share directly. Somebody says that, um, thanks so much, Father, for your encouragement. God bless you too. Another person says, thank you, Father. I really learned a lot. God bless you. God bless you too. Then another lady says that, thank you for your, for the teachers. Thank you for the teachers that we have. Oh, God bless you. God bless you, AKA Father Robert. Wow, thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you too. Another person is saying that, thank you, Father, and may God bless you. And that is from our brother, senior brother. Okay, yes. Another uh, person, our own uh, regular person says that, Emmanuel says that, thank you for the, the teaching for today. Thank you too for the teaching. Yes. Is there any other question? Is there any other clarification? But I know that God has blessed us. Oh, we are still having from our mother. Our great mother says that, uh, thanks so much for the teaching. This means we should not be, we should not be judging people by their appearance, 
we, we, we want to be a counselor. You, we, if we want to be counselors, we should not be judging people by appearance. Thank you very much, Mama. Let me be also quick to add that, you know, sometimes people come to church or you see people and then you are saying that, hey, does this person, so should this person to be the kind of dressing to, do they bring to church or this type of hair, hairstyle, do they bring to church or this, you forget that, no, please don't speak like that. It's your, the problem is you, you have, you have a problem in your head because if you are like, if you are like God who is accommodating, when you see people like that, you'll be happy and say that, yes, God, I thank you. Yes, God, I thank you that everybody has come to see. Somebody is saying that, please, Father, can you reproject the levels so that I can see the levels? Okay. The levels that we did, I don't know which one that you are talking about, but I only mentioned the levels that they are going to be treated next week. The levels, the three levels to be treated uh, next week. But I still present it. I'm going back. If it is that one, I believe it is this one. Yes. Yeah, these are the ones. Okay. I believe. But we are not going into them now. The three levels will be dealt with next week. Okay. I hope that is it. If it's not that, please let me know and I'll, I'll still look for it again, my dear brother. Okay. Another person says, thanks, Father. We will work on our marriages. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Bless you with that. May God you bless you to that you may. We can all work on our marriages and our relationship. Okay, good. Do we have any other person? Do you have any other question on the line? Is there any other person? Okay. I think as you are there, you just join me and sing. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry. Everything to God in prayer. Everything that we carry to God in prayer, we are able to find a solution. May God bless us so that every one of us will find a solution in Him. With God, all things are possible. possible. My dear brethren, shall we pray? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, who will love I lift your name over all the earth. Father, lately I have found myself in a place that I do not want to be in. Anger, hatred, and bitterness is causing me to lash out at the people around me, and especially at my dear loved ones. I am on edge at every point. The slightest gestures upset me. I cannot continue on like this. Oh, Father, please hear my cry. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, thy kingdom come. Sacred heart of Jesus, thy kingdom come. Most sacred heart of Jesus, thy kingdom come. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may almighty God bless and keep you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.